Okay. Uh, I think we got time for one more. Sure. All right. World 3 is not particularly long. Well, it, maybe it will be. We'll find out. Unless you fuck up. Um, yeah, that's, that is kind of the big if. Yeah, this world is the one where I, I started messing up a whole lot. This world has a couple of really neat levels and then a bunch of trash ones. And some rather jerkish moves some, in some areas. I think my favorite is the completely bullshit uh, secret area in uh, Orangutan Climb. Oh, the one where you have to go find a metal barrel, throw it somewhere where it will bounce backwards, and then ride it all the way back to the beginning of the level? Um, I believe we may be thinking of different bullshit secrets. I'm surprised there are two in that level. I could be remembering that wrong, or I could be thinking of something that was uh, GBA only. Ah, this mini game. Yes, bounce on the things a whole bunch until they get until they stop giving you goodies. What do uh, crocodile thingies or alligator thingies? I don't know. Excuse me, these are clap traps. No, what, do they, what do they want with these bananas? Like, why are they to piss off Donkey Kong? It's it's as simple as that. Well, what did he do? He's a primate. They're not. What more reason do you need? So that was yet another exhibit in um, Donkey Kong's fine hitbox. I feel like we're going to be harping on this for a while. Probably. Well, I mean, if it didn't give us fresh examples at literally every level... Donkey Kong Country 1 is not a good game. Then why was it popular? Because it's a playable game? It also got a huge marketing push. Unless unless we forget that uh, if you don't like it, you're that you're stupid. I'm sorry, but it's true. What the fuck was that? Um, uh... <laughs> See if you can respawn that barrel. No, that came out of a out of a landing thing, so I can't respawn that. R.I.P. the barrel. Rip the secret. What? What? <laughs> Good job. Skype picked a great time to lag there. <laughs> you start saying what, and I think you're about to get hit by one of those nuts that's being thrown, and then I see, and then just instantly smash cut to you falling down a pit. Yeah, I kind of like fell right through the side of the barrel cannon. It looks to me like you just overshot it. Yeah, that's kind of what it looked like to me too, to be honest. Hitboxes aren't the cause of all your problems, man. All right, let's let's try this again. This time, perhaps, do not run off screen while you do this. Well, how can he predict that? Like, how, how would you predict that that would happen? I wouldn't. I would just assume that it's a rare game, therefore coded on uh, the hopes and dreams of the of the programmers. I think what might have happened is that he hit the or he hit like the hitbox for the secret passage from underneath, and that it wasn't coded to actually open if hit from underneath. No, it it, it opened. It's just that it, it just that it, it closed the instant it it went off screen. Oh, oh, okay. Like I said, Rare Games, coded on the hopes and dreams of the programmers. This level is a good level. I like this level. Yes, we are Coog. It actually, does, it actually doesn't even let me finish. God damn it, game. Dank Coog. Well, presumably it doesn't want to waste the player's time. Like, if you're actually trying to win. Who tries to win at video games? Not me. Well, if you play video games the right way, you're never losing. You know, except for those games where you're intended to lose. But even those games can be won by not losing. But if the intention is for you to lose at the game, doesn't that mean that you're actually winning the, the game? No. 
Only if that's what you truly believe in your heart, Blast. Well, I mean, think about it. If you're... If the only way to progress is to lose, then it means that you're doing what the designers wanted, and therefore you're winning. At losing. You're winning at losing. This is... this is... This is an interesting approach. We'll have to consider this as a philosophical breakthrough. Alternatively, we'll just make first place loser trophies. Well, fuck. Going too fast. You got owned. Calm down, this isn't Sonic the Hedgehog. Treetop Town annoyed me when I was younger because I had to stop moving. See, that's the thing I like about this game for the most part, though, is that you don't you don't have to stop moving. Like, for the most part, everything is more or less timed that if you are hit it as soon as you possibly can, you will be safe. It is a much better fast game than Sonic the Hedgehog. It's, it's not quite as pronounced as it is in uh, DKC2, but, like, like I said, the idea is still there. Also, DK totally got those bananas for me as he was running off from being hurt. Like, if he had- if Ardix had properly, uh, kept up with the barrel on that screen, he would have hit all the enemies with it. <sighs> God. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. That's your own damn fault. Yeah, it was. But it's okay, the life doesn't matter because I got the, uh, I got Kong as I died. And yes, the Kong can then apply possibly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you did that some other time. Yeah, I did that the other... yeah. That is definitely not the first time I've done that. It's the first time it's killed me, though. Outstanding. Oh, no, no, see, I didn't do it this time, I'm learning. <laughs> and... And both Jigglypuff and Kirby just kind of twirl in midair when you when you do various aerial moves. I mean, that's because what the fuck do you do with Jigglypuff with a fighting game move set? You don't include Jigglypuff? I mean, that would have been the logical answer, but unfortunately Jigglypuff is among the most popular Pokémon, so not really an option. Could have always included Clefairy, but they ended up putting Clefairy in a Pokéball, and it was great. All of the metronome Pokemon are great. I love it. Smash 64 Clefairy is the best because sometimes you just get a horde of Clefairy coming in from off screen. Oh god. Or a giant Clefairy. I don't remember that at all. If Clefairy does metronome and copies Beedrill, you just get a swarm of Clefairy. Oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah. I forget. Can, can, can Clefairy... Um do self-destruct? I'm pretty sure it can do any of them. Also, bees. Bees are awful. I think the only thing it could- no, oh, no, it could even do Goldeen, couldn't it? Just as an added fuck you. And yeah, this is an area where Diddy is a whole lot more useful since he has a, a smaller hitbox, as you might expect. Gotta dodge them bees. Also, it is possible to miss that rope on the first, uh, on the first loop. Donkey Kong is generally pretty good about encouraging you to go fast. Just, you know, make sure you know what you're doing. At least there aren't any K. Rule's deadly speed traps. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I even got that one up. Yeah, I always kind of kind of felt like that was really counterintuitive. That in Sonic, you're supposed to go super fast, but... It, if you go super fast, you'll run into it, some sort of enemy, and you'll lose all your rings. That is not what Robotnik's Deadly Speed Traps were. Robotnik's Deadly Speed Traps were, you were going too fast for the game. We didn't code anything to deal with this. You are now stuck inside the geometry. I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm just saying, like, in general, Sonic games seem to run counter to what they're supposed to be. It depends on which Sonic game you're talking about. Generations was actually pretty good about the whole go fast thing. I'm thinking, I'm thinking specifically about Sonic 3, um, 
I remember quite a few occasions where I would just run forward into something I couldn't d predict at all. Sonic Team is not good at level design. Let's just get that out there. What are you talking about? Sonic Team is amazing! Just think about all your favorite zones, like Metropolis Zone! Or Chemical Plant Zone. Uh, hey, you shut your mouth. Chemical Plant is really fucking good. Yeah, that one's actually legit good. I don't like Chemical Plant Zone, honestly. I, I really love the Ice Cap Mountain Zone. Like, that was actually pretty good. I mean, it could be worse. It could always be one of the Dimps Sonic games. Ugh. Don't play Sonic Advance. Don't play Sonic Advance 2! Really don't play Sonic Advance 3. I actually don't know I didn't make this one shit. <laughs> it's all the way it's all the way to the uh right. All, all the way to the right. I don't like Rambi's level. I forget, does Rambi's level come with ice physics too? Because it's using the snow. Um It does use that tile set. I don't remember if it actually has ice physics. Because yes, ice physics are a thing in this game, and they make the slippery controls even worse. Ice levels in video games are just in platformers specifically, are almost always universally awful. Well, in Donkey Kong Country 2, there were quite a few sections where you could just slide along, and if you knew when to duck, which was pretty easy since your two characters were both pretty short, like, you could just, just cruise on by without really having to do too much input at all. That was kind of fun. Like, Donkey Kong Country 2, they knew level design. They really did. Did you miss the rope? I did not. Rope was covered in bananas. This is a uh, bonus game, okay. Riveting, ain't it? The bananas will never lead you wrong. That's the one thing that they actually did get right. Yeah, the bananas are pretty much just a signpost more than anything. Hooray, another Rambi. Please avoid collecting any more of those. Look, man, I don't know what the game's gonna give me in, at the end of each bonus area. And you can't leave without collecting it, that's the problem. Well, you could, like, if you just let the thing eat you. No, but once you- but yeah, but I don't know what it is until I get it. And once I get it, I have to collect it. Clearly the answer is to never go to a never, another bonus area ever again. That wouldn't be completionist. I say, but if I did that, then I wouldn't be able to... Then all there would be to show off would be Donkey Kong Country's stellar level design. Also, um, yeah, that's a thing that happens sometimes. I see. <laughs> <laughs> you were not supposed to get behind that thing is the problem. You're not... Uh, yeah, you're not ever supposed to be behind those things. Well, it wasn't supposed to activate when you when we were just trying to get over it, so... Really, I guess we're even there. I mean, that's still one of those things that should probably have a failsafe. Yeah, there was definitely some QA needed on that one. I mean, I, I saw that. That thing just kind of activated while you were trying to cross it. Like, there was no way to avoid it. Yeah. Oh, well. At least, as like I said, the levels are at least for the most part pretty short, so... Yes, they could... It could be much, much worse. Like, I dearly love Tropical Freeze, but... That game has some really, really long levels. Yeah. I actually got to kind of fatigued going through the game, and I just dropped off. I had never actually finished it. Still haven't. I kept trying to enjoy it, and I got to the second world, and it was, uh, I just was not enjoying it. Ride the barrel. Diddy, that's not how you ride the barrel. <laughs> um? <laughs> it is now. Oh, no, for god damn it, Diddy. Uh, <laughs> like, literally, as soon as I got off of it, the game was like, yeah, you want to grab this, right? Oh my god, that's beautiful. <laughs> I think it's going to happen again, too. 
It's alright, I just I'm not holding Y this time. There we go. Just keep on doing it, Diddy. Don't let anyone tell you no, Diddy. You're beautiful inside. Is he really? No, he's actually trash, and you should pretty much never use him in comparison to, like, Dixie. Yeah. Diddy's conquest is pretty much all about Dixie. The only time Diddy is acceptable is if you are playing, uh, Smash Bros. Eh, nope. Gotta avoid the B. And this guy, who is extraordinarily slow. Fortunately, they, they, they fixed their their issue of making partner characters more fun to play in Donkey Kong Country 3, because Baby Kong is really... Alright, so everybody, like, totally knew that was a cool thing, right? You, you knew to take the ostrich and run all the way back to the start of the stage? Well, if you played enough Platinum games, you'd know that. Back in the 90s, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't even collect letters, right? I mean, at least it has the decency to spit you back out over here. That's good. Oh yeah, so this fucker is a uh, Mankey Kong. He throws barrels at you. Oh yeah, and espresso there, or uh, expresso. You can't actually stomp anything. Got those long, spindly little legs. Honestly, I think he's pretty much the the worst animal friend in in the in this particular game. In this game, if we are discounting squawks, yeah, I would agree with you. Oh man, Clam City. We're gonna get so rich here. Actually, we're just gonna have a bunch of shitty clams shooting at us. You know, as they do. I don't remember them shooting that quickly. Oh, they, they, they shoot that quickly. Maybe that was a change for the GBA version. But yeah, th those pearls, if you could collect them, you'd be so rich. Too bad they have no worth to a monkey. Yep. When the official currency is bananas, then you can't earn any clams. Are you sure the bananas are the currency? Well, considering that DK has no value when his hoard is missing, and he is king of shit mountain when it is there, I would have to say yes, he with the most bananas is the ruler. Although, in later games, they instead just use coins with a banana on them, which is sort of like an imitation banana, not quite as good. They, they, swapped, they stopped using the banana standard and just swapped over to a fiat currency. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I can't believe they did that. The economy of DK Isles just completely fell to shit afterwards. Next thing you know, they'll be swapping over to crystal coconuts... Everybody knows that's a bubble that's gonna crash. I like that they took the time to draw two different shark sprites. That's that's kind of nice. As in for when it's facing one way and when it's facing the other? Well, no, like, there, there is, like, a tiny little blue... There's, like, a smaller blue shark and a bigger green one. Also, what the fuck? Come on, game. That was that was bullshit. <laughs> Dang, you just got towed. Where did where did my fish go? Your fish is dead. You killed it. But worst pet owner. But it was the clam. It wasn't me. Worst pet owner. All right. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go exterminate a colony of bees for that. I hate this boss. I really do. This boss is terrible. Well, it's not as bad as the DKC2 version. The DKC2 version of this boss is trash. Yeah, um, having to hit, like, a, a really tiny stinger, that doesn't work. Yeah, see the problem with Diddy and throwing things. Yeah, Donkey Kong is actually much better for this fight, because you can just jump into the thing. Not like that, though. That is not the way to jump into him. Hit boxes. I think he was still becoming unread at that time. Yeah, probably. His invincibility frames hadn't kicked in yet. Had worn off. 
Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing about it later DKC1 bosses, like after the first couple, that... Yeah, you, you pretty much have to do the thing where you wait until they become vulnerable again. And that's obnoxious. The first boss of this game is the perfect video game boss. It just bounces and it just kind of bounces around a whole bunch. There's no explanation for what it is or why it's there. All you have to do is do exactly what you've been doing for every other enemy in the game. There's no there's no complicated sequence of events. Well, technically, we have been throwing barrels at things. A lot of them B-shaped. Wait, seriously? Are you still not dead? We have to go to five. This was before the three-hit rule was introduced. Ah. So everything else is gonna say just the first couple have been four hits, so there. Get fucked, B. Get wrecked, B. That boss is fucking awful. So yeah, we're actually about halfway done with the game. A little over, actually. Yeah. Go us. That was pretty quick, actually. <laughs> Less than an hour. So, alright, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see everybody next time. See ya. Goodbye, everybody. See ya.